Ladies and gentlemen, from the Smoothie King Center here in New Orleans, Louisiana, USA, live on DAZN. We're now set to go with a special super flyweight attraction. Set to make a ring walk from New Orleans, Louisiana. Please welcome India, Azuka Rodriguez. Is. What an opportunity this is for the New Orleans girl, India Rodriguez, formerly India Smith, the course and mentioned just seven weeks ago. That majority draw over eight rounds against the Japanese former super flyweight world champion Mio Yoshida. She started fast, stayed on a fall with her. And on the wrong side of a very, very close decision. She needs to get the round in tonight. This is a great moment for which to do that. She's a handful of this girl. She is, and she's actually fought a lot of the top names that we know of today. Uh, one being who actually she got the victory against was Sula Fabina. Um, she also went up against Christina Cruz with her pro debut. Christina Cruz got the nod there, but a uh, tough opponent comes to, to fight, and so she's going to have to be on her feet to tonight. Welcome the undefeated Olympian fighting out of Houston, Texas, Captain Ginny Fuchs. I sense danger. Lila Scarlett Cross. All the way back in 2016. It feels like a long journey, but the time goes fast and slow too because you've all come a long way since then. You're a part of that all women's boxing card as well. I know it's a, a seminal moment for all of you. She's come a long way personally too, hasn't she, Ginny? She's come a really long way. You know, I turned pro at the 2016 Olympics. Ginny was very close to qualifying. She had one Olympic trials, but she didn't qualify overseas. And so she felt she owed it to herself to try one more quad and, and make that Olympic team, which she's always dreamed of doing. So she stepped around, went to the 2021 Olympics and uh, got a, a late start into the pros, but she knows she has to be on the fast track. She's ready for the big fights and she wants to prove that tonight. Of course, had many really good fights with Marlon as far as with the amateurs beat her twice in those Olympic trials as far as the course world champion and Someone that she is chasing in the pro. She's going to need to prove that she's got what it takes over a slightly longer distance here tonight in order to step once more closer to that ambition. Eight scheduled in our third contest here on the Fall of Bell. Ladies and gentlemen from New Orleans, Louisiana, live on the zone. We are set to go with a special super flyweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Bet Online and Stagefront. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside. From Louisiana, Larry Berger. From Mississippi, Keith Hughes. And also from Louisiana, Keith Thibodeau. And at the sound of the bell, your third person in the ring from Louisiana, referee Terry Boudreau. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the super flyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the purple, gold, and green. She scaled 113.2 pounds. Her professional record, six victories, seven defeats, two draws, with one win coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of New Orleans, Louisiana, India, Azuka Rodriguez. Rodriguez. 
opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. She wears purple with gold trim. This southpaw scaled 113.4 pounds. Her young professional record thus far perfect. Two fights, two victories, one of them coming by way of knockout. Here is the 2021 Olympian fighting out of Houston, Texas, Captain Ginny Fuchs. Just make sure you follow my instruction uh, commands at all times. Touch gloves. Let's go. See the height difference there. Ginny Fuchs, 5'4". Inja Rodriguez, only five feet tall, but she starts fast. You ready? Eight round schedule. At the 115 pound limit. For the New Orleans girl, she'll know what an opportunity this is to upset the odds. And she's coming out as we expected here. But, well, Ginny Fuchs, has looked faultless in her first two professional outfits. She struggled to get fights so far. Her opportunity to really impress on a big platform too. And I just wonder, Michaela, back at the, the Yoshida fight. Yoshida out, looks look slower out, look as she approaches her mid-30s and, and holding her feet more. Ginny's got brilliant feet, cuts brilliant angles, is sharp as well. And as this fight wears on, could that be the difference between them? Definitely, she's also a southpaw, you know, and I think that if Rodriguez studied the tape, she knows that she can't stand outside and box someone like Ginny. Ginny has a really sharp jab, she's really good with her timing, really good with that space, and so her only bet is to pressure Ginny, and she's smart. She's coming out right off the bat, coming right at her with big combinations and trying to smother her punches. What she can't do is pull straight out and let Ginny catch her at the end of her shots. It's just that early frantic pace has just settled a little bit as the first minute just ticks over. Fuchs just stepping around. Rodriguez looking for that left hand. Uh, Rodriguez is leading with that right hand. I spoke to Christina Cruz earlier this week as she fought her in her pro debut. And she did say that she leads with a lot. With, Rodriguez would lead a lot with that right hand. And that's a smart thing to do against someone like Ginny Fuchs, who is a southpaw. That's, that's the kind of tactic you want to have. You want to lead with that right hand. So Ginny has to make sure to not get caught with that and stay circling. So yeah, just take a little half step back and just take the space away from her encounter well with the, the jab and the left hand. I think the key here for Ginny is to not headhunt. Um, she's still only in her early stages of being a pro and there's a lot of things in the amateurs that you that you kind of got to get away from in the pros. You don't want to headhunt. You, it's not all about straight shots and scoring, snapping the head back. You really want to start to invest in the body. And so that's what I kind of want to see her doing in this fight. Especially with someone like Rodriguez who's a lot shorter and is definitely trying to get under her shots. Jim needs to aim low and dig to the body. but she went to LSU, so uh, Louisiana's a big part of her, her her heart. So she obviously had to wear the LSU first night for Yeah, for, for Rodriguez as well, homecoming of sorts, and it's going to be meeting opportunity here for her. She knows the, the pedigree the fuse brings and what it will mean to upset her. And just seven weeks after, probably her career best performance so far as a, as a professional, even in defeat. Seen it a few moments ago with Xavier Madrid and Aaron Ponte. The shorter fighters pressuring the taller range of fighter and imposing their style and their game plan over the eight rounds. Can she do it here? Ginny Fuchs just stepping across to her left hand side, just looking to work that jab. Lovely work off the angle as well. See Rodriguez whipping those hooks on the inside. Ginny's got to make sure to carry her hands, bring them back to her head. She wants to face the best between 112 and 
118 pounds, Benjamin Marlon, as far as of course there's Maria Bautista who's got the WBA title, Ali Machino, the IBF, of course the Superfly, actually Macias from, from Mexico, the WBC, and then up at 118 if she gets that far. She has the frame for it too, to, to move up and fight some of the, the bigger girls, of course, Nina Hughes who beat Jamie Mitchell in the, the last year. Yeah, absolutely, and she knows that too. She she says that when she goes in and puts her name in for fight, she's like, I can fight anywhere between 112 and 125. And she's a bigger person in the ring tonight, but she actually only weighed in at 113 and a half. So yep. she was she was under the, the weight limit, the contracted weight limit, which was 115. So she's just in such good shape. You know, she's been training, staying ready since the the fight made with Strong Gardner and Clarissa Shields versus Stan Marshall back in London. She fought in the undercard for that, and she's been staying in shape, staying ready hoping to get an opportunity, but it's been a long time. So yeah. I can tell you one thing, it's eight rounds tonight. She's definitely not going to gas now. That's right hand, just there's a few just steps off there on the, on the inside. And, uh, well, congratulations on you, most recently to get to this well. At 135, are we going to be staying there? You know, um, I, 135 wasn't too much of a difference when it comes to my weight cut from 130. You know, I was still cutting a lot. I thought, okay, moving up to 135, I'm going to focus on eating more protein and, and putting on a little bit more muscle mass and the strength training. And I did that, and so it really made 135 just you feel good? Just as strenuous as a cut. It was, it was still a very big cut for me. So I actually think my best weight is going to be at 140. You know, I I want the big fights right now. I, I am number one contender for Katie Taylor, but it looks like she has a rematch clause with Sean Joe Cameron as well as Amanda Serrano now. So I don't know where that leads me. I'm sort of waiting to see where things play out, but I want to go for 140 and, and challenge myself against Chantel Cameron. You know, that's a big fight for me also. I think there's a lot of big fights for me and they're all up. None of them are really down. It's a great fight for you. Just got to let the, the division play out. And I know it's frustrating to wait, especially when the, the fight with Bangor was, was so close, nothing in it really. But uh, that is boxing, unfortunately, the, the politics. And we're all going to be talking, just notice a cut just over the, the eye of, of Ginny Fuchs there. Just caught something on an angle, perhaps. And we'll see how that develops as the fight goes on. Into the third we go. Under some pressure early from Rodriguez. As we expected, she might be early in the contest. If that cut is on the same eye as the slight cut she got in her last fight, it could just be reopening because she did have a slight break, not from not from the fight, I'm sorry, it was from the sparring session not too long ago, so um, it could have just broken open a little bit. Hopefully not too much. But that's what, that's what you get with a fighter like Rodriguez, who's just swinging with those big hooks on the inside. We'll try and get a look at that in, in between rounds up from here, so we'll try and see what it was that caused that, that cut. You see the blood just trickling down the outside of the eye, so nothing too problematic for her so far. Nice right hand, landed from Rodriguez, and I dare say she looks sharper than she did seven weeks ago against Yoshida. And she too looked in brilliant condition at the weigh-in yesterday. Yeah, she's putting the pressure on Ginny. You know, she has nothing to lose at this point. Uh, you know, not, not the best record. So at this point, she's getting an opportunity again, and she wants to show that she's still in the game and she's still got it. She continued to get fights and continue to probably work her way up to, you know, a world title challenge, which is what I'm sure she's hoping for. I really want to see Ginny right now. She has a great job. She always has. And I really want to see her start investing in the body. Um, you know, sometimes those like like this can they can take shot head shots all day. She keeps coming back, you know, anything Jenny Jenny lands, Rodriguez is coming back with two or three more, so Jenny needs to slow her down by finishing her combinations to the body. The two the fights are so much shorter than, than you and they're staying low, pushing down is not the most comfortable thing either. Oh no, I'm I am i am used to that yeah. <laughs> I'm used to that. I, I have to deal with that all the You're time. You're fight, yeah. As she goes to the corner, we'll try and get a look at what caused that cut in the previous round, but it is a little open here. We think it might have been a clash of heads. Could be, could be that there. As you say, there's a, there's a there's real flurries of activity coming from Rodriguez too. Nothing, uh, nothing intentional there from her. No, and like I said, I, I do believe that that may be an old injury that's sort of opening up right now. But she's got a good cut in her corner. She'll be okay. Hope it doesn't bleed her eye. There you go! There you go! I shall know that a rough house of 
approach and volume is her best chance of, of winning this. She's not foolish enough to, to believe that she can just go and outbox the, the pure boxer here. Rodriguez has, has made a decent start. And enough success to believe that she can stay in this fight as we head into round number four. with that head movement at range just to establish the jab from Ginny Fuchsia that time right hand over the top there. Yeah, she, she dropped her backhand right over Ginny's. Fuchsia's just having a little bit of success just on that little layback and the encounter taking the space away from Rodriguez. Powerful success when she lets her come, makes a full short, and then comes back with her when she's leading off. That's a nice jab. Yeah, I think that Ginny's used to letting her opponents come to her. She's a boxer first. But at, at moments like this, when she goes at Rodriguez, Rodriguez heads the pull straight back. And then she stops. You've got to continue that momentum and, and sometimes do exactly what your opponent's doing to you. Rodriguez is pushing her back right now. So Ginny's got to bite down and push her back just like that. The double jab, straight shot and then come back with a second combination and not let her come forward because Rodriguez looks comfortable when she's coming forward. That's when she's most comfortable. She doesn't know how to fight going backwards. So gina has got to see that, adapt, and start pushing her back. Good double straight left. Rodriguez just looking a little labored for the first time in, in the contest. Just a little bit of snap has gone out of her shots and she's just stepping around there now, just looking for the, the left hand off that jab. And another. Yeah, Rodriguez's work rate has been really high the first four rounds, so if she doesn't keep that up, this is where Ginny's experience is going to kick in. She's going to start getting her timing together and hopefully take over the next half of the fight. Yeah, of course, it will be new territory stop, stop, stop. For, for her as well. First eight round goes that far. We'll take a look at that cut. She heads back to the corner, running down the outside of, of the eye, a little bit into the corner. over the top, a couple of punches landed on that in the last round. There's messy stuff from, from Rodriguez, punches coming from all angles. In fours and fives, not making it easy for Fuchs to, to establish the range and, and dictate long as, as she will want to. Of course, she wouldn't have wanted an easy fight tonight. No, and, and these are the type of fights that she's going to need because she's on the fast track and she does want to move her way up quickly in the ranks and get a world title shot. She doesn't need easy fights. In, and I know we all want stoppages, but she needs to get the rounds in if she wants to move up fast, so. Because the reality is there is pressure at 35 as, as much as she's in great shape and she hasn't got loads of miles on the clock. There, there comes a point where you have to say, well, we need to get a move on here. We need to get the fights in. She don't want to let your, your prime years pass you Exactly, you know, I, I've been, I've been pro now for seven years and I'm just now getting to the biggest fights that I have. So it, it does take time because she knows boxing is still on the rise. She, she can be on the fast track a little more. Um, but yeah, just need to get these rounds in and, and, and work on making that transition from the amateur style into the pro style because it is very different and there's a lot of adjustments that you have to make. That's a nice left hand the mouth guard of it's Rodriguez just come out there. It might be a huge mouth guard of something. I was talking to Christina and she told me that Rodriguez does leave with her right hand a lot in the fight and she's catching Ginny a lot with that, with that straight right hand in this round. There's another one right there. She's got to make sure to keep her chin tucked and not let her head rise up. Move it side to side. And, and just not be in the way of Rodriguez's straight right. Counters her well with a couple of shots there. And again, Rodriguez just tries to tie her up. Frank, come on, come on, quick! Nice work off the angle there from Fuchs. Rodriguez again, slip forwards. It's untidy work from her. She's just landing. One shot in every three or four that she's throwing. It's not high percentage, but because of the volume, there's stuff getting through here. Whatever that is, yeah. It's something, yeah. Good straight left from Ginny. Got to start dropping the body shots now. She's got to finish the body. The one-two isn't going to keep someone like Rodriguez off you. You've got to slow her down with the body shots and hurt her. 
and make her respect you, make her not want to rush you and stay inside. Good three punch combination, just pressing her back there and finishing the round strongly. To, to Gemma Ruegg about Ginny Fuchs, she's been in with the, the who's who of, of British boxing, she says highly rates uh, young Shannon Ryan who saw in action beat the uh, European champion Martina Benilo last weekend after I think just six or seven fights, but she said the other standout on the list was, was Ginny, she said so so slick, timing, balance, everything you see in those first couple of fights and in the amateurs too, um, and she really she's looked faultless so far, but this is by far the toughest opponent she's had, not having it all her own way here, but these are the kind of things you need to work through as a pro, the cut as well, those little bits of adversity, she'll know she's in a fight here for the first time in her pro career. Definitely, and this is, I think, you know, one of the most, another competitive division in women's boxing. I think that, you know, 130, 135, 140 is very competitive, but the next best thing is, you know, down here at this weight at 115 and 120, so there's a lot of big fights for her, and I think she'd make a, an entertaining, competitive fight against a lot of these top girls. Marlon Esparza really is, is the one, isn't it, with the history that they have in the amateurs, the number of times they fought, she, she didn't get the decision on the number of occasions where she probably should have. She got it when it mattered in the Olympic trials and some of the more crucial contests, but seeing how far as far as it's gone now, her world championship status, that would be the one that really she wants if she could take off anyone, I guess. Yeah, I think that's a great fight for women's boxing because what's been really working for us are these rivalries, right? And I think that's a great rivalry they had. A lot of, I think they fought six times in the amateurs. Um, Marlene beat her the first four, and then Ginny came back when it, when it mattered, like you said, at the Olympic trials and beat her for the Olympic spot. So uh, I'm sure Marlene Esparza would want to try and get her revenge there and, and get that win back. And I know Ginny would love that fight as well. Just trying to counter her with the, the left and then the check right here because Rodriguez stepped in minutes ago in round number six. Again, Rodriguez just leading with that right hand to the body. In position. Just have a habit of spoiling and making things messy, rushing in. Work out, work out, work out. Three or four, and then just holding. Fuse there, Lance. A nice straight shot, follows it up well. Just leaning back out the way of the that swinging right hand counter. Good little spell this from Fusion again. They tie up. 30 seconds to go in round number six. And that's where the head clash can be. Dangerous when both throw at the same time, step in behind the punches too. Especially with the orthodox and the south bar. Huge start to, to land those clean straight shots. The quality work has come from her throughout the contest, but it is the work rate from Rodriguez that's just keeping her live in the fight. Again, just winging away, cuffing shots, but the volume is there. And again, she holds a little bit messy, a little bit of a spoiler, making things easy for Fuchsia at all, working hard. I've dealt with that cut pretty well. We knew what she was going to bring tonight, and she has brought exactly that. Lovely uppercut left hand, just sent her back onto her heels, and Fuchs clearly sensed a, a moment there, and that was a, a lovely passage where she just, like the amateur, amateur days, hit, lean back, make your opponent miss and go again. Yeah, you can see she felt like she hurt Rodriguez there and tried to, tried to finish her and follow her back to the ropes. You know, that's when I'd like to see her really drop her right hand and, and, and take down to the body because when you have Rodriguez on the retreat like that, she's going to duck and move and slip and try and roll and, and not get hit. And the head moves, but the body doesn't. So in these next few rounds, if she really wants to do some damage to Rodriguez, she's got to start investing and finishing with some big body shots. She's clearly got good finishing instincts because for her uh, pro debut against Randy Limerale, she dropped her at the end of the first round. She just caught with a shot and immediately felt like she'd done some damage, stepped on her, put her hands together and put her over. You see, she felt the same at the end of the last round. As we start the seventh. Rodriguez again, just rushing in. Yeah, you, I expected Rodriguez to come out tough tonight, but she, she's, I also expected her to maybe to die down a to little fight. bit. Yeah, she hasn't, has she? You know, this is an eight-round fight against someone with Ginny's pedigree, an Olympian, plenty of experience, and I expect her to sort of die down, but you can just tell she's really hungry and, and not not giving up. The benefit of activity, of course, isn't it? Having that, 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 that fight with uh, Yoshida seven weeks ago, staying fit, you can see from the condition of her yesterday, she's clearly been training, and 
activity is absolutely crucial. She's wasted no time getting going. Knew this was her big opportunity that came out of blue, she said. Wasn't expecting it to be against her the name of Night Fuse and at home as well. Two huge boxes ticks and not one she can let go quietly. And she isn't doing so thus far. Stiff jab from Fuse. And a hook there. Let's just get tangled. Ginny's uh, one of her best assets has always been that stiff, hard jab. It's really hard to get through. She has a good timing and good spacing with it. But Rodriguez is, is coming over it. She's coming over that jab and she's coming over Ginny's straight left with her shots. And Ginny's head has been a little bit up and center in the middle. You know, I think a lot of the things in the amateurs is it's offense, offense, offense. And your offense almost becomes your defense because you only have three three-minute rounds. And you're trying to, to score and get that get those points off and, and win that round. And so now it, it becomes a little challenging in the pros to make that transition and, and focus more on strategy and not just scoring, but setting up your shots and, and working on the defense. So um, I think that they'll, that's one thing she'll take away from this fight tonight. But like I said, great experience. This is the type of fight that she needs. Every time she, she throws, you see Rodriguez always steps right towards her, closes the space down. That makes it difficult to find the, the, the space that she needs to work. It's not been the cleanest fight for her. As you say, these fights aren't always going to be perfect. They're not always going to be exactly as you want to be. It's about trying to work through the problems that are in front of you. And she's caused her own set of problems as she does as a fighter tonight, Rodriguez. Keeping that cut clean it and keeping the blood at bay. Jenny Fuse enters the eighth round for the first time as a professional. Again, just messiness. Rodriguez busting in, holding. Man's a right hand again to try to work away on the inside. Really, really wants to make something of this final round. Rodriguez is fighting like the underdog. She knows she's the underdog. She knows that maybe a lot of people aren't betting her to come in here and win against someone like Ginny Fuchs, but she has not stopped every single round giving it her all. Boxing track record, you can't leave it to, to the judges. You can't leave it to anybody to, to interpret what you mean to them. You have to go out and do it. She has given it absolutely everything. It's not been the highest quality of work, but the volume, the busyness, the conditioning she shows. She, she looks like she may go a little flat in round five or six, but she's put her foot down again. Kept the pressure on, made things all good for Virginia Fuchs. Again, just lands a short up with the right hand on the inside, looking to land that long left hand, lands the right hand off it. When they've been in this kind of range, it's been Fuchs' fight, but again, it's been difficult closing that space all night long. Virginia's having more success when she leads with her backhand and lets that long straight left timer and catch Rodriguez before she has closes that space with multiple shots and combinations. It seems like when she uses her jab, Rodriguez will try and time her and come over the top. Swinging away, work out who will finish strong here. Just over 15 seconds to go in the eighth and final round. Again, again, leading with that straight left is when she's successful with that right hand. That first jab kind of smothers the shot. She doesn't get that backhand in. So first eight rounds in the books are crucial eight rounds for Ginny Fuse. Rodriguez gave it absolutely everything she had. It wasn't the quality work, but it was the volume, it was the consistency, it was the pressure. She brought everything that she has as a fighter. She knew that this was her big opportunity tonight. It'd be interesting to see whether the judges deemed it enough many rounds they've given her on the cards. That cut early for Fuchs as well. They had to manage that in the corner. They did so well. And in hindsight, Michaela, the kind of fight that she probably needed on, on this fast track journey that you mentioned, that she's going to get in with those world champions in the next year or 18 months. She's going to need to have three or four of these kind of fights. Yeah, and I think I think the shots that came from Ginny, and you can obviously tell she's a little bit more um, technical and, and, yeah. and more sound 
of a style, but Rodriguez did land a lot of big shots. And like you said, this is this is a, a fight, a learning experience for her because it's, it's a style thing too. You know, it's, it's tough going in an opponent with an opponent like Rodriguez who, who's relentless and doesn't stop. And you're having to box and also bang on the inside and, and put all your tools together and maybe do things that Ginny hasn't really practiced as a pro yet. So a great right, test, a great experience. Good job for both of them. We'll see how the judges saw it. So our third contest here on Before the Bell, done and dusted. Wins for Christek Basildua and Xavier Madrid in our second contest. Who will be victorious here on the third and final fight? David Diamante has the scorecards. Let's head to him. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of action here in New Orleans, we go to the judges' score totals. Keith Hughes and Keith Thibodeau both scored about 80 to 72. Larry Berger, 79 to 73. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. She's still undefeated, Captain Ginny Fuge. So wide on the cards for the judges. Rodriguez looks disappointed because she gave it her all, but it was the quality work that they favored over the eight rounds. Won the fight. I just always like to, you know, try and think about what the judges might have saw because you, you just never know. And I think Rodriguez really gave it the fight of her career. I mean, she came out and she pressed Jenny every single round. So props to her. That was a great fight. Um, she'll actually give a lot of other fight, uh, top fighters challenges in the future. But tonight went to Jenny, so I'm um, proud of her and just looking to see what else she does. You gonna stay around and watch the rest of the car? Yeah, of course. You know Tiafimo Lopez a, a long time. How did you react to his decision this week after probably the performance of his career last weekend to relinquish the WBO title at 140 pounds five days after after winning it clearly there's stuff going on outside of it. I mean, I, I'm disappointed to hear him say that. You know, he's, he's back on top now. Um, amazing performance, one of the best performances I've, I've seen from him. So I think that it's all up from here. Now now he has everything in his hands. He, he calls the shots now. So there's some really big fights for him. And I think everyone wants to see him back in the ring. And I hope that maybe it's just a, a stunt. He, he gets back in there. So this is the... Uh story of, of the fight. Rodriguez rushed her with, with everything that she had, but Ginny Fuse with the long straight shots was what the judges deemed to be the cleaner work and she won it on the card. Michaela, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. Going Thank you for your, having me. Your friend, pleasure. Thank you for, for coming to join me as well. Go uh, backstage and congratulate your, your friend and I'm going to switch you out for tonight's promoter. He has he is dressed for the warmer climate. Pop those on. It's like a helicopter, a Hawaiian helicopter pilot vibes, <laughs> as you will see in just a moment's time. Ginny Fuge, they're having her hand raised.